Hey squad, Sykes here and welcome back to another Sea of Thieves tutorial video here on Installation X. In this video I'll be doing a full guide for all the commendations and journals for the second tall tale from the Pirate's Life Pirates of the Caribbean update named The Sunken Pearl. Now this video will contain full spoilers for the tale itself so you have been warned before you progress any further. Now before you can vote on the Sunken Pearl tall tale you must first complete a Pirate's Life tall tale which will unlock the Sunken Pearl for you to select. If you need a hand with the first tall tale check out my guide linked above. If you are good to go then head over to the castaway camp and vote on the second tale from the left. You will get another neat cinematic cutscene from the mysterious castaway for you to enjoy. However, at the end of this cutscene you will not have to travel through a green portal to the Sea of the Damned, as this tall tale takes place on the Sea of Thieves map itself. Once the cutscene has ended, a blue beacon will appear off into the distance. This beacon will lead you to a new extended area of the map south of Discovery Ridge in the bottom left corner of the map. Once you have sailed over there, you are looking for a pile of debris. Hop off your boat and begin to swim down. You will want to follow the path of the shipwreck and debris down to the depth below. At certain points along the swim will be air pockets for you to collect more air to continue your journey downwards. Once you are at the bottom, you will need to follow the underwater geysers that are releasing air bubbles for you to use if necessary. You will then see the Black Pearl come into view spectacularly along with the rest of the Sunken Kingdom. Now your first step will be to swim over to the Black Pearl and head below its deck. Follow the path round moving various objects to clear a way through and then you will find yourself in front of a dead ocean crawler. You will need to take the key from the ocean crawler's claw which will unlock the captain's quarters door. Head back on deck and unlock the door to the captain's quarters using the key. Head on inside and you will find Jack's compass sitting nicely on the map table. The next step you will have to take is to use Jack's compass to navigate your way into the sunken kingdom. Follow the red needle and it will point you down into a cavern not far off from the Black Pearl. Head past a sunken shipwreck and you will come to a bubbled barrier. These will appear quite often and should hopefully after a hotfix update be working for everyone. Cut or shoot the glowing blue plant and the barrier will drop allowing you to enter. Jump down into the water and swim up to a mast with a ladder. Head up the ladder and follow the path round into the first tower. Now this tower will be full of puzzles that will involve the mermaid statues that are scattered round the levels. Before you get stuck in, head to the wooden plank propped up against the back wall and you will see the first journal tucked away behind the planks. Before you can complete the puzzles you will need to fight off a couple of waves of ocean crawlers. The final wave will drop a siren heart that you will need to place into one of the mermaid statues. The clue to the mermaid puzzles is in the paintings on the wall. There are three statues, one holding fire, one holding chains and the other holding a gem. You will need to change the position of each statue's arm correctly and then activate the larger statue with the horn for the puzzle to be completed. The first puzzle requires the gem statue's arm to be in the lower position, the fire statue's arm to be in the middle position and the chain statue's arm to be in the high position. Arranging the statues in this way and shooting the horn statue will cause the lower level of the tower to fill with water. Next up, you will need to activate a geyser that will send you up to the third level from the second level. To activate the geyser you will need to change the position of the arms of all the previous statues into the high position and shoot the horn statue to activate the geyser. Once you have reached the third level you will have to face off against another couple of waves of ocean crawlers. Again, a siren heart will be dropped from the final wave and you will need to place it in the fire statue. You will have a new painting as a guide which will show you to place the fire statue in the lower position, the chain statue in the middle position and the gem statue in the high position. This time though the statues aren't all on the same level as the gem statue will be higher up to the right of the carved face on the wall. Aligning all the statues correctly and activating the new horn statue will cause the rest of the tower to fill with water. This will then raise you up towards the path of the Kraken skeleton. Before you move on though, make sure you have a look around behind a small pillar to find the second journal. Once you are ready to move on, follow the path across the Kraken skeleton and up towards another bubble barrier. Shoot or cut the same glowing blue plant for the barrier to fall. You will then move into a small room where you will see a Kraken skull and several tridents of dark tides. Pick up a trident as it will be useful for the fight that is about to follow. After a monologue from the mysterious voice, it will be revealed that it is in fact the Siren Queen who is talking. The barrier will then drop allowing you to swim outside where you will have to fight several waves of sirens. There are food barrels and tridents on the seabed back near the Black Pearl and several bubble geysers for air if you require them. Once you have taken out the final siren leader it will drop a siren heart for you to use. You will need to take the siren heart to one of the mermaid statues that are outside the large citadel door that depicts the head of the siren queen in front of the Black Pearl. 
Follow the same rules as before using the painting to move the two statues into the middle position and activate the horn statue for the door to open. Now, once the door is open and you begin to swim inside, you will want to take a look at the shipwreck to your left. Have a look around and you will find the fur journal laying on top of the wreck. Now, to move into the next area, you will want to follow the cave off to your left and swim up. This will then take you into another chamber filled with water. You will have another mermaid statue puzzle to solve. This time you will want the fire statue in the lower position, the gem statue in the middle position and the chain statue in the higher position. This time though, the horn statue is in a trickier location. Swim up to the top of the chamber to grab some air. You will see the horn statue on the other side of the barrier above your head. You will want to shoot it with a pistol or an eye of reach to activate it and the puzzle will be completed. Completing the puzzle will cause the chamber to drain of water and the fight is back on with the ocean crawlers. Once you have finished the fight, you will then be able to use the pulley to open the door. However, before you move on, you will want to take a quick jump into the pool of water off to the left of the gem statue. Swim down to the shipwreck and you will find the fourth journal. Now head back to the pulley and lower the door to move into the next chamber. Now this chamber is the most complicated and requires a fair few steps to move on. First, you will want to head over to the pulley in the centre of the chamber. Use the pulley to lower the shipwreck that is suspended by chains off to the front wall. Quickly, run over to the shipwreck and hop on as the shipwreck will start to move back upwards when the pulley is released. You only need to use the shipwreck long enough to be able to hop onto the stone ledge to your right. Follow the path along the ledge to get to the shipwreck at the back of the chamber. Jump onto the shipwreck and use the armoury to make sure that you have an eye of reach equipped. I will explain why in just a second. Now, you will want to jump off the shipwreck to your right and follow the path along the rock ledge down towards the previous chamber. At the end, you will see a new painting of mermaid statues. You will need to use your eye of reach to shoot the statues from the previous room into new positions. This time, the chain statue needs to be in the lower position, the gem statue in the middle position and the fire statue in the high position. Now, you will need to head back up the path you came to get back onto the shipwreck in the back of the chamber. This time, you can head into the captain's quarters and pick up the fifth and final journal. Then, you will want to aim your eye of reach up into the top right corner of the chamber. You will see the same horn statue you shot at from the previous chamber. Shoot it and the room will begin to fill with water if you have completed the puzzle correctly. Next up, you will want to climb the ladder and you will see another pulley in front of you that will raise the wooden planks for you to cross over and jump onto the rock ledge. In order to progress, you will need to turn right and go through the chamber with the horn statue. However, before you do that, turn left and jump across the waterfall into the mouth of the carved face. You will see the key for the silver blade that will be worth picking up for the extra commendations. Take the key and jump down into the water and redo the previous steps to get back onto the ledge. Now head right through the chamber and to another bubble barrier. Shoot the glowing plant and head through the barrier following the path off to your left to reach the deck of the silver blade. Take the key and unlock the captain's quarters to reveal the chest of everlasting sorrows. Keep the chest safe as you won't be needing it until you complete the next big battle. The aim of this tower is to lift the silver blade to the top of the tower. You can do this by moving the capstan which will raise the ship up higher towards the top of the tower. Now, whilst doing this, you will need to use the cannons to shoot the ocean crawlers at each level of the tower. Every time you let go of the capstan, the ship will slowly start to fall again, so if you are doing the tail solo, you will need to swap between the cannons and the capstan regularly. Once you've taken out all the ocean crawlers, the kraken will appear for you to fight. Now, unlike the kraken encounters in the game where you have to shoot the tentacles, you will need to focus all of your fire on the kraken's head. Once you've dealt enough damage, the kraken will disappear. The silver blade will remain in place and you will be able to head up the mast. Before you head up the mast though, make sure you grab the chest of everlasting sorrows. Climb up the mast with the chest and you will then find yourself in a small room with a pathway leading ahead. However, you will want to take the chest and place it down in front of the sorrowful door to your right across the stepping stones. Placing the chest down will unlock the door. Head on inside and you will see 5 different etchings for you to inspect to learn about the tale of eternal sorrow and unlocking the commendation. Read them clockwise round the room from the first etching to the left of the entrance in order to read them in the correct order. Now, head outside for the final encounter. Moving on will bring you to the final chamber where you will face off against the Siren Queen. The battle will transition between one-on-one -on -one with the Queen herself and then fighting off waves of her Siren Royal Guard. 
After several waves and by dealing enough damage to the Siren Queen, you will defeat her to move on to the final part of the tale. The water in the chamber will drain away, and the bubble barrier that was in the centre of the chamber has now vanished for you to dive down through the water. You will find yourself in a small chamber with three skeleton statues behind a barrier. Shoot each skeleton to free Anna Maria, Scrum and Gibbs. The crew will then tell the tale of how they ended up in the Sunken Kingdom and the Pearl being captured. Now importantly is that you must stay through the cutscene to hand Jack's compass over to Gibbs. If you leave early, you will not get the completion for the tale. Once you've handed the compass over to him, you have the option of swimming back up to your ship or to get a fast travel using a mermaid statue in the chamber. Well squad, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did then please make sure you leave a like, head over to Installation X and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications of future uploads. Let me know your thoughts on the Sun Compile Tool Tale in the comments section. Follow myself and the channel over on social media with links in the description. And as always, I'm Sykes and for more on Sea of Thieves and all things Xbox, stay tuned to Installation X. Bye guys.